numbers from the BC Coroner's Service tell us a shocking story about two crises colliding. The COVID crisis requires self-isolation and the closure of borders. Both have had unexpected consequences on the opioid crisis. It's made things really hard for people that use drugs. And obviously, as you see in our data, uh, too many people continue to die and we need to continue to take a look at innovative ways to help people who use drugs in our province. Jordan Harris runs a harm reduction facility in Prince George. She has long held the belief that the war on drugs as it is today is failing and that a safe supply of drugs is the only option. So if you have a substance use uh, disorder that requires you to spend, you know, from one to two hundred dollars a day per se, and you are someone who is unemployed, not housed, um, and you know, any kind of disability, which we know substance use disorder um, is an actual disability, uh, you got to do what you got to do to survive. Organizations like Canada's police chiefs call on government to address the toxic drug supply. But one of the four pillars of dealing with drug addiction has yet to be addressed, and that's rehab. Is that something this community, this region needs? We talked about how, unlike other communities, we're almost a destination community. Uh, so anybody and everybody who has a problem that needs a service winds up here at some point, probably. Um, and yet we have nothing, really. Um, four beds, I think, I think, at last account anyway, set aside somewhere in Abbotsford or something for Northern Health. Uh, it just doesn't seem to be on the, on the radar yet. I don't know why. Uh, yeah, I'd say re recovery is expensive, difficult, and uh, it, it often fails the first number of times someone goes through it. So. Uh, my opinion is the harm reduction is easy. There's a lot of metrics you can put towards that, and uh, you know it, it does something to address the issue. But I think there's been uh, an extensive focus on harm reduction, uh, particularly over the last few years, and I would say that's been heightened during the uh, the COVID pandemic with uh, the prescription of opioids. Um, and I don't think in the long term that that serves to eliminate the problem. It really just perpetuates it. So uh, while well, you remove some risk from that behavior, there's no end game there. So uh, no, still the missing pillar is, uh, is definitely treatment. In fact, in a recent letter that headed for the Provincial Chamber of Commerce, the local entity recommended the province take a look at converting the virtually empty youth containment centre on Gun Road into adult rehab. Is that still on your radar? 100%. Yeah, we, so we've sent that policy forward in, at uh, the BC Chamber AGM in May. Uh, virtually, and that now is, is on the books. Nobody has a silver bullet to deal with the issues of homelessness, addictions, and mental health. The response that like our whole province really has come together to, to respond to COVID-19 has been kind of like equal parts enlightening and like really heartening to me. Um, there's like obviously, you know, dissent and conflict and that's in everything. Um, but I think we've really shown as a province that when we come together with a, a common focus goal, we can accomplish a whole lot. While there are plenty of big picture ideas for dealing with the opioid crisis, the most immediate for Prince George is that shelter Marilyn Hall hopes will help. Has it been a long process? Uh, it has been a very long process and you know I, uh, I like to talk about it on a Tuesday and start working on it on Friday, that kind of momentum. And it, but we're there uh, and I'm happy about that. I think it's a project that is uh, state of the art. We've only seen it in two other communities and it's going to work for us.